One, two, three, let's go! We've started early today with a trip to Crush Cafe to meet my sister and to try one of their famous vegan milkshakes, which are amazing by the way. We've also hired a car for 70 New Zealand dollars a day, which was the cheapest price we could find in Apia. When hiring a car in Samoa, they usually require you to either leave your passport or a deposit of 100 New Zealand dollars. Now, myself and Taylor have traveled a bit in the past and are too nervous about leaving our passports anywhere, even though we know it would totally be safe here. So we've opted to leave them with a $100 deposit as a peace of mind, which also means that today's adventure will have to be a cheap one. On our tour with Daryl yesterday, we stopped off at the Falifa Garden Falls, but I didn't have my good camera with me, so that's our first stop off today. younger I remember driving over this bridge and looking down and seeing people bathing and washing their clothes but I never actually made it down here myself so this is extra special for me our first real port of call today is Supwanga which is home to one of Samoa's oldest coconut oil plantations they weren't running tours today, but luckily, nine-year-old Jordan already filmed this. So once again, let's take a trip back in time. It takes a single coconut about a year to ripen to the correct level necessary for this process. And once it does, it is cracked in half and the meat is either shaved by machine into a bucket or manually shaved using a specially made flat hook, usually mounted onto the front of a seat that the worker sits on. From there, it is tightly packed into a stainless steel tube covered in thousands of tiny holes, a bit like a cheese grater. Plastic stoppers are then placed in the top and bottom of this tube, and it is put into a vise to be manually pressed. And voila, pure coconut oil. The remaining coconut shavings are then dried on a giant metal sheet and sold for cooking or livestock feed. Nothing is wasted. Being a staple food of Samoan culture, there's even a legend that comes with how the coconut came to be. Now I remember being told it as a child, but I'll let our tour guide tell you. Right. Years and years ago, we had a lady named Sina in Samoa. Long, long time ago. They look after the eel under the water. That lady Sina looked after the eel. Remember the pool we went this morning? Most of the village around the whole island, they have the pool like that. No pipeline. Only use the river or use the pool at the swimming, collect some water to do the cooking or whatever they need. What happens? Sina look after the eel. The eel grow big and tall. Every time Sina go to the pool, getting surprised and scared because they see the eel's face. Sina run away from this village to another village to get away from the eel. But he went to another village, he used the pool, and see the eel again. Sina decided to come back to his village. Got back to his village the next day, Sina went, killed the eel. Killed the eel, cut the head, lift it up. And the eel speak up, Sina, why you kill me? And the eel say, and Sina say, I'll kill you, I want to get rid of you. I sick and tired, come in there and see your face under the water. And that's why I want to get rid of you. And the eel say to Sina, right, just plant my head beside your house and wait. And that's what Sina done. 
dig the hole, pull the head of the eel down, and later on we grow up is a coconut. And let's see how we get a coconut in Samoa years and years ago from the head of the eel. It's kind of sweet in an old, creepy, fable kind of way. But basically, the eel fell in love with Sina. So when he died, he made himself into a coconut tree so that he could always watch over her. And that's why the top of the coconut looks like the eyes and mouth of an eel. Supuanga village also has a viewpoint where you can see the Fuipusia waterfall. Which brings us back to today. Also, just between you and me, Samoa has next to no drone laws yet, so I'm extremely lucky to even have these shots. As we reached the hottest part of the day, we decided to cool down at one of Obolo's most popular tourist attractions, the Tusua Ocean Trench. For just 20 tala, you can take a dip in this beautiful natural wonder on Upolu's south side. Without exaggeration, this was one of the greatest experiences of my life. It's just a short walk and a very scary climb down into this 30 meter deep hole, but it is totally worth it. With near crystal clear water and a few ropes to help navigate the space faster, there is plenty to explore down here. I'd highly recommend booking yourself some extra time down here because it would be very easy to spend a whole day here without even noticing. They even have picnic fale and gardens to accommodate that. There are three caves to explore down here, two above water with many beaches inside, and one submarine one that leads out to the ocean. Now that one is extremely dangerous if you're not an experienced swimmer with expert gear though. So we had a look from the outside, but didn't swim into it. Now if you're a climber like me, I'd highly recommend some good waterproof booties, because the cliff walls down here can get quite hot and very sharp. And regardless, definitely bring or rent snorkel gear, because there's lots of little critters to chase and rock forms to explore. After exploring the trench for much longer than we'd expected, we cleaned up and headed for the tradition resort for some classic tourist entertainment. A fear fear night. I've got to hand it to Tradition Resort because what I wanted to show Taylor was just some fire dancing, but what we got was so much more. Along with a great buffet, we were also treated to dances from all around the Pacific, not just Samoa. From traditional Tongan dances to Hawaiian, Nuean, 
and even good old Aotearoa. At last, the moment I'd been waiting for, the Siva Afi, or Fire Knife Dance. The Siva Afi is an ancient warrior's demonstration of Ailao, which is the warrior's display of strength and skill, typically performed with the Samoan War Club, or Nifo Oti. In ancient times, this was carved wood with serrated edges, sometimes even adorned with shark's teeth. But when Europeans introduced metal, this was replaced with a machete blade, and eventually evolved to be double-sided, wrapped in cloth, dipped in fuel, and set on fire. Just casually. Shamefully, it reminds me of my own fire spinning lessons and how I haven't been back for a year. Perhaps watching these guys will give me the motivation I need. Although if I'm honest, they more just make me want to go to the gym. Unfortunately, this is almost the end of the road for my Samoa adventure. And what a way to end it. We've seen and done some truly eye-opening things and I'm feeling fresh and recharged and ready to tackle the projects back home again. It's been great to revisit my childhood and even better to see how things have changed. In the last episode of Adventure Samoa, I'll be visiting the Baha'i Temple, where I'll explain what the Baha'i Temple is and why it's one of the reasons I came back. So stick around for that. For now though, thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.